Edward Wagner. He is the CIO of digital at JLL Technologies, which is the division of the global real estate firm JLL that focuses on delivering technology to accelerate innovation in commercial real estate. He leverages 35 years of industry experience, including more than 15 years as CIO to help some of the world's largest entities create their workplace digital strategies. I couldn't think of a better speaker to be here with us in times where we're working remotely, in times where we have questions about how real estate will play a role in our lives going forward in a, in a hybrid world. And uh, Edward, thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us. We're very much looking forward to your presentation. Thank you, Jose, and I'm excited to be here too. I know we have a lot of people that work on business transformation, operational excellence initiatives, um, and you may be wondering why is a real estate guy here talking to us today? Here's my, my strongly stated goal. By the end of this presentation, I hope I have you thinking differently about how changes in the office place, the workplace, changes that are impacting your people, changes around sustainability, are gonna have huge impacts on your organization and potentially you're not thinking about everything that you could be thinking about or you're not seeing some of these opportunities. So that's my big goal for this. When we come to the Q&A, as, as Jose said, challenge me back if I don't meet that goal or if you have questions or if you don't think what I said is relevant for your organization because the way that we get through uh, the coming months as we return to the office is we get through it together. So with that, let's jump right into the, the meat of the presentation. How do we prepare for the hybrid workplace? How do we leverage emerging prop tech for flexibility, experience, and sustainability? First though, I know people are wondering who is this guy that's talking to us? So let me give you a little bit of background on me. As, as Jose mentioned, 35 years in the industry, 25 at JLL with 15 as CIO, a number of first in the industry team accomplishments. So that's a way of saying we've seen a lot with a lot of the world's leading companies. But more importantly, I did a career transformation where I'm leveraging my experience solely to help people like you create your digital workplace strategies. I strongly believe that there's opportunities to help our clients and most importantly, their people get a better experience from the workplace. Let me give you a, just a little bit of background on, on JLL. If you're not in real estate, many people don't know us. We're a Fortune 500, 18 billion in revenue, uh, a very large uh, uh, company, obviously. But more importantly, we have a big uh, impact on the world around us. We are uh, throughout the world, 96,000 employees, uh, 300 offices, operations in over 80 plus countries. And we also have a, a industry recognition, a couple that I'll point out that I think are very important and relevant. We're very proud of our uh, recognition as one of the most ethical companies. We just found out that we've gotten it for the 14th consecutive year, just the other day. We're proud of being recognized as an admired company, but I'll also call you to the third line around our people care. Uh, very proud about that. And you're gonna see that in a minute when we talk about the importance of people in our workplace. We also have an impact. Uh, we touch a lot of real estate, over 5 billion square feet around the world. We also have an impact on our environment. There's almost a quarter of a million metric tons of CO2 that have been conserved so far. Why is that important? I know, uh, Jose, when we started, went around and asked where people were from. If you look out your window right now, any building outside of your house that is a uh, uh, an office building, an industrial, retail, hotel. We do work in those buildings. We impact the world around you. So a lot of what we're talking about, you know, is going to have an impact on the assets near you, the assets that you're in, or some of the offices that you're potentially looking at uh, going in. So let's talk a little bit about how will the workplace change uh, based on the research that we're seeing. And this is going to be some combination of McKinsey research, JLL's global research, but also Gartner. And we're starting to see this emerging concept called the hybrid workplace. And I'll explain what that means in just a minute, but let me show you some of the key trends that we're seeing for 2021. And I won't read through all of these, but these are the big macro trends that we're encouraging people to be aware of. You'll notice there is a lot of things around our people and how our people will be uh, experiencing it. Notice number five, 
employees are prioritizing more about what matters in their work life based on their pandemic experience. Number six, there's a new purpose for the workplace that's emerging. You'll see in number seven, health and wellness is emerging as a trend that historically in real estate, we've not seen that as a first focus where people will ask questions about the, the health and safety in their workplace. It's off the charts the way people are asking about that. And it makes sense if you think about people coming back to work. And then lastly, how do we create these offices that not only will help drive the human performance, that are technology enabled, but we have a responsibility to our environment around us to be sustainable. The built environment produces almost 40% of the greenhouse gases. So at JLL, we and many of us in the industry believe we have an, a responsibility for the things that we do to have a positive impact on the world around us. So let's get right into the people. And you probably would never expect to hear a real estate person say this. Buildings are not important, people are important. If the people don't like the building, if the building is not safe for them, if they can't come in and do the work, if they can't produce the goods and services that your company produces for its clients, then the building doesn't have a use. So we put a big focus on people. And what are people telling us? And numerous surveys from both JLL, McKinsey, and Gartner, we're starting to see this emerging trend of people favoring a hybrid workplace or a work from anywhere concept. And you can see the slide on the right where, and these numbers will, will move a little bit up and down, but the emerging trend every time we do the study is people who can are looking to work from home between one to two or three to four days per week. And, and we say work from home, that could be work from anywhere. That's an important mega change for a lot of organizations. And I'll show you in a minute how some organizations are reacting. Now, you may be saying, Eddie, my company is regulated or we can't deliver what we do without being in the workplace. And there are many, many companies like that. There are a lot of people that, that can't have the freedom to work from anywhere. But here's why you should pay attention to these trends and think about them. We're all in a war for talent. And as the baby boomers start aging out and retiring, the people that we're looking to replace them with is a smaller population demographic. That war for talent is gonna get tighter. And as those people are telling us, I want more choice, as they're looking for better experiences in life, what they get at work is gonna have a very real impact on where they choose to work. So even if you're in one of those environments where you can't give people as much choice as say, another company, it is going to have an impact on how you attract talent. So there are strategies, even in those situations, that you can use to create that better workplace. By the way, it's not just around industries. This is from a McKinsey study. As I mentioned, we did some work with them and did a webinar with them. They're actually sorting it by the types of activities that we do. And I know for those of you that are leading transformation projects, one of the first things you look at is looking at activities and how we can automate activities and, and change management around that. So we're starting to tell people from a workplace perspective, instead of thinking about, I go to a desk every day to do my work, think about it around activity-based work. There are times I need to do heads down work, which I could probably do from home. There are times I need to come into the office to meet with Jose, he's in the office, I wanna, I wanna see him, I wanna talk to him. As I'm walking down, I see someone that I haven't seen in a while and I just want to catch and do a, a, a catch up chat. And then there's the teamwork that we do where we collaborate and collaboration is emerging as one of the number one reasons people want to return to the office when they have a choice is to collaborate with their coworkers, but also for some of the socialization that they get from, from uh, being around their coworkers. So that's going to have a real impact on how we and you should be thinking about your space, the technology that enables it and your people's experience from it. And that is in essence what the hybrid model is. How do we orchestrate hybrid in the workplace? How do we think about the impacts to the efficiency of the business and getting the work done? But as I said, most importantly, how do we help our people get a better experience out of that as they come back to work? So I'm going to pull a couple of things that we did. Uh, uh, from a McKinsey webinar that we did with uh, a couple of thousand real estate people. And I'll show you some of the results from that as we go through uh, the next couple of slides. So one of the questions that came up was, does hybrid working look differently depending on the organization? And I alluded to this earlier. 
The answer is yes, it does. There's not a one size fits all. And historically, people will reach out to us and say, can you tell us what others are doing in the industry around this trend or around this building type? We're in a situation where, as you know, the entire world went to remote work virtually overnight. And now we're all coming back. So there's not a lot of people that we can point to and say they've got this right. Everybody is evolving. Everybody is thinking. Everybody is being agile. And I think that's a key takeaway. As you think about these concepts for your company, you've got to become more agile. We've got to get the workplace, the workspace to become more agile. And if you think about your traditional offices, there's not a lot of agility in that fixed space. There's not a lot of agility in that fixed uh, office environment. I'm going to show you some ways that we're thinking about how do we change that? How do we make that, that more acceptable? You'll notice we've got the middle, the hybrid workplace continuum in the middle uh, highlighted. That seems to be where the majority of companies are, are landing is we're going to have a mix of some office and some remote work. A lot of the headlines that you see about some of the technology companies uh, going full scale uh, remote work, if you actually read their policies or drill into it, they've made the policy for remote work permanent, but they've also set up so that people can come into the office to collaborate or when they have meetings or in some cases when they choose to. And so I think a key takeaway here for a lot of folks on the phone is help your companies think about what's the right solution and mix both to get the work done and to enable collaboration to create the better experience, but also don't forget the war for talent. And again, uh, another slot from McKinsey, this breaks it down by uh, industries. And you'll see that there are certain industries that have a high potential for remote work. And, and you'll see uh, the, the, the lighter blue part of the graphic shows their estimation of the, the maximum uh, percentage potential. So you'll see there's room in every industry for some more remote. And as I mentioned before, obviously there are certain areas where there's a lot more uh, potential than others. Now, again, if you say, Eddie, we're in manufacturing, which is toward the bottom, or transportation and warehousing, and you do have to be in those locations to produce those goods and services. But think about this. If you're surrounded by companies that are at the top of the list, and if they start working differently, that has an impact on the world around you. That could have an impact on the talent that's available in the talent pool right around you. If you are in an industry that provides services to workers in the office environment, if you're surrounded by companies at the top of the list, it's gonna have a real impact on you if you're in food services, for example, at the bottom of the list. So that's why I made my point as transformation experts, operations excellence experts, we need to be looking at the world around us because what others are doing are gonna have an impact on our companies with the choices that they make. So let's talk about how do you come up, because I know transformation people, you've got a lot of projects going on and here I am throwing one more saying this one's very important, but how do you get this company-wide initiative underway? Who needs to be part of the team? Who needs to lead it? And again, we worked with our friends at McKinsey. Uh, we did it, but this is an, another poll and I'm actually showing you the, the poll results and the percentages. And it was a bit of a trick question. Uh, McKinsey, through its work, as well as JLL with its work, had actually determined that people, representatives from each of these groups need to be involved. But you'll see from several hundred uh, corporate real estate heads that participated in this survey, almost nobody has everybody they should have involved. That means they're missing opportunities. I'll make a strong statement. Feel free to come back and challenge me or Jose, if we want to write it down and have me come back in a year and see if this prediction is right or not, would love to do that. I think if you, the transformation folks on this call are not working with their heads of human resources, their heads of IT, their heads of real estate, and their chief financial officers, you're missing big opportunities in the workplace space because of the impacts. So a very strong statement. I know we can't go uh, for hours today talking about it, but I would welcome the dialogue if people don't believe that or if they want more information uh, or if they need help bringing some of those people to the table because the people that use those groups to drive those changes are the ones that are going 
uh, to win in, in this area. And let me again explain why I pull those three together. And remember, I'm a CIO in a real estate organization. So I've got two big buckets of spend, if you will, IT and real estate. But if you think about it, the people, which is a huge bucket of spend with your compensation, if they come into the office and they feel productive, if they like where they work, they're going to focus on the work, they're going to be more efficient. And that's a return on your compensation dollar. I mentioned talent. If we can use space to attract talent, we've seen the Silicon Valley companies do that for a couple of years. We're starting to see trends happen. You saw Amazon uh, headquarters two announcement and completely different office design that's focused on sustainability and experience. But let's come back to the CIOs inside your organizations. If we're going to change the office footprint in real estate, that has real impacts on network security how IT delivers services inside that physical footprint. If those two aren't married up, you're potentially losing opportunities in your IT spend. And then the last one you're gonna see in just a minute, real estate people are bringing prop tech into your operations. And in fact, I can actually get some of this prop tech into your operations without your CIO. I don't wanna do that. That's why it's really important to get them to the table as we think about this and as people are looking at, at prop tech. So now that potentially I've scared some people thinking that I'm bringing technology in a little bit, let's talk about some of those near-term opportunities for how we would use this technology to transform the hybrid model. And again, I have jokingly said, I could talk about this for hours. I know Jose would pull the plug on me, but I can talk about it for hours. So if you see any of these concepts that you wanna talk about more or drill into more, let us know in the, in the questions or I'm always happy to uh, have conversations afterwards with people. I gave you three key themes when we started. I'm gonna hit flexibility first. That was one of the key themes. So how do we think about flexibility in the new environment? This is a, a graphic slide that's, that's actually a composite of everything that we talked about before. On the left, you'll see historic workplace allocations. And, and you've heard the jokes, you've seen the jokes about uh, cube farms or a lot of desks. Uh, there's been a bit of an evolution over the last uh, decade or so to have more collaboration space. People are bringing amenities into the workplace. Think of that like the coffee bars that you're starting to see pop up in a, in a lot of organizations. We actually did one of those at JLL and we found that our people weren't leaving the building to get coffee, but they were also reporting back that they were bumping into coworkers that they would not naturally bump into in the course of the day and the conversations around client initiatives or the, the ability to collaborate actually went up because we had created these spaces that allowed people that wouldn't naturally uh, interact to actually interact over a cup of coffee. You'll notice on the right, this is what we see coming in the future. You'll notice the box is a little bit smaller. That's because in some organizations with the elasticity, you will see a contraction potentially in certain of their offices. But there's also some industries that we're seeing expand. For example, in logistics and certain manufacturing, especially in the pandemic, uh, we've seen some of those businesses literally explode. And so there's a huge demand for space, uh, for expansion of space, for new space in areas. So it really depends on the industry who may be contracting a bit, who may be expanding a bit. But the one thing that we're seeing uh, overwhelmingly across everybody is an increase in collaboration spaces. We're seeing that as a demand from the employees when they come back. They have collaborated uh, with the technology like we're using right now in a way, and a lot of them are saying, when I come back to the office, I don't want to lose that ability to just quickly engage with somebody. I want to keep the ability with the video uh, with my coworkers who are uh, choosing to work from home we have a, a problem in many uh, industries and, and locations where we're starting to see um, certain segments of our population being disadvantaged by this. We're seeing in certain industries, uh, women executives are choosing to leave the workforce. Uh, we're seeing in certain areas that uh, minorities are, are feeling that they don't belong. And so how do we create, we can use space to help people that are struggling in the pandemic or may feel like they don't have a choice, be able to still collaborate, be able to still use those spaces when they can come into the office, but still interact with those of us that do when they're working remote. 
That also means some of the individual spaces may reduce if more of us are choosing to work from home and come in when we choose to. And I'll talk about how we manage that in the next slides. So how do we manage that? If you think about the transformation that you would need to do in your companies, and if you think about going to your C-suite to show them, you know that you can spend a lot of time putting together presentations, and sometimes it's a struggle to get people with a very short time frame to, to, to look at a project to understand what you're trying to communicate. So a visual is worth a thousand words. I've got a video movie that I could play if we had more time, but I'm gonna give you a screenshot. On the top of the chart, you'll see a traditional office plan. We actually took this out of an occupancy planning system. And on the bottom, you'll see a reconfigured hybrid office with more collaboration space. Now, the reason this is important is because with this new technology, we can actually do a virtual walkthrough. They say a picture's worth a thousand words. Imagine having a session with your CEO, COO, CFO, showing them the way the office used to look, doing a complete walkthrough, and I'm jumping through to, here's a, here's a collaboration conference room, and imagine having your head of HR say, that, but that conference room, that doesn't have our new social distancing protocols in place. There's too many chairs. In the old world, you'd have to send that back to a team of occupancy planners to go into a technology to redraw this to come back in a couple of weeks. With this new technology, I literally can convert to the 3D plan. You'll notice those chairs are highlighted. We delete and we're right back. And if you notice the times changed in the lower left hand side, I literally did this in less than 15 seconds in real time when we actually do the walkthrough and we can continue. This gives you the ability as you're walking through those transformation projects with your real estate groups, your CFO, CHRO, to make real-time interactions so that you can do some modeling so they can see it, so you've got that speed to be able to execute on some of these projects. And again, when we talk collaboration space, a visual is worth a thousand words when you're talking to your CEO or a business line leader about how creating collaboration space can help people come together. It can help people when they come into the office to have the different activity spaces that they need that we pointed out when we started on the McKinsey slide and to help them understand what they're going to be getting out of that project. Now, if we've redesigned that space, how do you maximize the use of it? And for the next couple of seconds, I'm going to talk about using AI or artificial intelligence in the space. This is something really new in real estate, and I know we're seeing AI in almost every technology presentation you go to, but here's how we're using it in real estate. And by the way, the product that I'm showing you right now, we just worldwide launched yesterday inside JLL. So you are some of the first people in the world outside of real estate that has seen or heard about this, this product, the benefit of uh, uh, Jose uh, bringing us in and, and showing some of this. So in a nutshell, again, I could walk you through this for an hour. I could get the AI experts on the phone to talk with you, but just to, just to quickly show you, it takes the information from that space and we can allocate it based on real-time sensor data or based on what we're finding out from the locations on the, the left to show usage patterns and people requirements. But look in that middle graphic. What if I could tell you about groups and people that need to be connecting and how the space either enables that connection or is creating disconnects. Remember where I talked about earlier, a big key part is some of those bump ins with coworkers that you may not naturally bump into, or maybe the organization is so large and you're so dispersed in the, in the offices that you don't often see people. This is a way to use that data to help make the company interaction and collaboration more efficient. And then on the right, you'll notice that we're actually showing how do we create what's called a dynamic demand. Now, there's a lot that I just said in that, and I'm trying to convince, like I said, a really long presentation into a couple of minutes. Let me give you a real example. Right now, most of you, if we run around the horn and, and, and Jose were to ask you, uh, what, what desk are you going to sit at when you go into the office? You either have an assigned desk or if you went to your reservation system, you could get a desk number and tell us which desk you're going to sit at. That's the way most of the office environment works. Think about though, when you call a restaurant to make a reservation, you say, I'd like a table for two on March the 8th. And they'll say, Mr. Wagoner, we'll see you on March the 8th. They don't give you a table number. 
Okay. They've got the demand. And on the day of, they'll look at their supply and they'll allocate the tables based on that supply. They may close certain dining rooms or they may open their overflow dining room for large establishments. So we're it's a very simple explanation, but we're taking a page out of that. How do we let people say, I'm coming into the office and we say, OK, we'll have a desk for you and use AI to understand how people like to work who they should be interacting with. Remember that interaction slide I showed you earlier? And then the day they show up, give them the best desk for them that encourages those interactions, but also allows us to better utilize our portfolio. And I'm gonna come back to that in a minute. Remember I said, there's a sustainability play here. If I can use maybe 10% of the, the office on a particular day, because only 10% of your workforce is coming in, then I've got cost saves in other areas. We're going to have better utilization. So I'll talk about that in a minute, but uh, I wanted to uh, call that out. Let's jump over into experience, though, before I get into sustainability. If we're making all these changes in the office, and not only that, you have people coming back to the workplace, and this is office. These are people that are working in manufacturing facilities. These are a lot of our retail workers and even frontline. We have a lot of healthcare clients. People want to know that they're going to have a better, healthier, and safe experience in the workplace. And there's a focus on that. Uh, it was a trend that was starting pre-COVID, but the focus and the intensity of the trend has only increased because of COVID. And I want you to think for a minute about how you get things done. That went a lot faster than I intended it to go. How you get things done right now in your workplace. When you go into the workplace, you have systems that you will uh, use that are old systems, if you will. But think about your, your experience at home. Most of us have mobile devices. We can open up the mobile device and we can order food to be delivered. We can order supplies to be delivered. We can actually, if you've got a smart home, you can interact with your house and tell your house, I'm hot, I'm cold, turn the lights off, set the alarm. When you come into the office, you don't have that experience. We kind of go back in time a little bit, if you will. The younger people are telling us in our surveys, I know I've got this experience at home. I can use this technology. I know it exists. Why can't you bring that technology into the workplace? And so there's actually experience apps that are coming out. Another one, uh, there, there's a lot in the market. We've also introduced our own that allows people to interact. Remember I said, ask Sam coming to the office and I need a desk. How about if we make that really easy for the employees? What if they're scheduling meetings and they need to get a conference room? Or when I'm finished with that conference room, I wanna have it cleaned. If you think about the way you do that right now, it could be a little bit of an involved process. Or what if I made it easy where you just pull out your phone and you click, and we take care of all of the coordination in the background. We integrate with those systems on the back end or with the providers that provide those services so that our people coming in have a great experience. So that as things change, we have a way to help them interact with those changes quickly and to better communicate with them. And by the way, that, that demand for a better experience is happening across all asset types, not just in the office, but even people in manufacturing. We can't always do social distancing on manufacturing lines, but there's still safety protocols we can put in place. There are still ways we can help them have a better experience um, in their workplace. Let's go to sustainability. And I'll talk about uh, sustainability here for uh, just, a, just a few minutes as we uh, wind up my part of the presentation. I talked about the workplace uh, just a few minutes ago, and we talked about reducing uh, the utilization of the offices on certain days. This was a slide that was used yesterday in, in our announcement of the AI capability and the head of our occupancy planning actually used these real numbers from real JLL experience. If you think about reducing, and, and I started out by saying that the built environment produces about 40% of the greenhouse gases. If we just had a 10% reduction on certain days using what JLL knows about just its clients emissions and calculating the OPEX reduction and the sustainability achievement, it's the equivalent of almost a quarter of a million cars off the road. The reason I point that out is because a lot of people, when we talk about some of these opportunities, they start out with 
I can't afford to do this project. I'm going to say you can't afford not to look at some of these things because of the impacts to your people, impacts to technology, impacts to your office space and the cost of running that, the impacts to our built world. But there's also other things that are starting to come into the real estate space. I'm showing you right now a motor company. You might say, Eddie, why is a real estate company talking about a motor company? Or more important, when you find out we invested in it, why did you do that? There are so many motors in buildings, you don't even realize it. Motor technology is an older technology. What if we could use new technology to more efficiently run? Many of you have probably done that in your homes. We need to bring that into the built environment. And you can see on the right, the energy saves. You can see reliability. You can also see in some of the instances how we can help interact with the individuals in the audience and uh, in, in the offices. And I'll give you an example of that with this, this next uh, item. This is a bit of a sustainability play. This is sensor technology. Now, we often think of sensors as tracking uh, you know, utilization in the office. How do I know that I've got a lot of people in the office so I know how to, to, to manage it uh, or if I'm potentially doing uh, analysis for, for cleaning, uh, disinfectant cleaning that we have. Those are all great uses. But what if I told you that those office buildings that have been vacant for a while, that the engineers need to flush the water pipes in it because water, look, look at a big building outside your window. If the building has not been used for a while, water's been sitting in those pipes and the chlorination and chemicals in the water starts breaking down and there are, um, we can get sick from that. So we've got to flush the buildings. You probably don't know this, but on many weekends, there are engineers in the bigger buildings that are flushing pipes if the building's not being used to keep it safe. What if I could put in sensor technology that actually monitored water flow inside those pipes and could tell us that this has had water flow, it doesn't need to be flushed. Think about the sustainability savings. What if I can actually monitor how the place is being used so that I can tell the cleaning company, hey, this area was really intensely used today, make sure it gets a lot of disinfectant cleaning today, but this floor we didn't use at all, so you, you don't need to really give that, that much attention. Those are real cost saves, those are real health plays, those are real sustainability plays for us and for our companies. And there are a lot of technologies, like I said, we could go through many of these just to talk about it. But the key thing is there's so many trends that are happening in the world around us. All of these trends are going to impact you and your companies and your offices and the technology you use in some way, form or fashion. So let's have the conversation about how do we help each other create that better world. And again, like I said, my whole job and passion in this last part of my career is using my experience to help you create that digital workplace strategy. It doesn't matter if you're a client of JLL or not, or if you're a client of a competitor. Like I said earlier, we all will be better together coming out of COVID and back into this new workforce as we look to make sure we have the workplace, the technology, but most importantly, we take care of the people that deliver the goods and services for our companies and for our clients. And with that, Jose, I promised I would do my four hour presentation in the time slots you gave me. And I think, I hope I uh, got that. So I'm ready for some challenging questions. Fantastic, fantastic overview and coverage and in the, in the, in a few areas where you really got deeper on Edward. And uh, so, all right, so everybody, Questions for Eddie, just, you know, send it as a, our way, send it our way. I'm looking at the monitor here, seeing your your questions coming in in real time, and I'm going to be relaying, relaying them as many as possible to, to Eddie in real time here. So take advantage of it. You know, how are you optimizing real estate in your organization? Uh, what are some of the ideas that you have? Run them by Eddie right now. You have this opportunity to tap into this incredible experience and wisdom and expert knowledge that, that he has. and very gracefully has uh, is sharing with us. So with that, Eddie, let, let me ask you this, as you're doing planning from a real estate perspective, and uh, and, and let me clarify, does JL do, do real estate in the United States? Uh, you said it, but uh, uh, sorry, I missed that. Uh, is that in the US only, outside of the US as well? I, I, I didn't pay attention to that. 
everywhere in the world. If there's literally everywhere. when I said look out your window and if you see buildings that aren't houses, we're there. We we can buy it, sell it, lease it, build it, move people into it, run it. That's incredible capability. Um, that's uh, Frank Harper is making a comment here. Great presentation and uh, and uh, it's 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 amazing to see you know the 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 coverage and the depth of what you have. It's fascinating. Uh, I don't think many in our audience appreciated that that and uh, so alone I think there's a lot of people who are absorbing what's going on here. Um, a lot of the participants in our conference are business transformation leaders, they are operational excellence leaders, they are change leaders and inevitably they get in discussions about optimizing real estate in their own organizations. Um, so you, you mentioned you talked about this of course during your presentation but I would like if you could emphasize one more time um, you know what is the best way, especially in the in in the, with the transition that we're having right now? What is the best way you feel to to approach um, HR and IT and executives in the company to start having a more focused conversation around this topic? What 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 would be a good entry point, I think, for that conversation with uh, senior leaders in the organization? You know, it's it's a great question and. Um... I, I do a lot of CIO forums and I'm telling people, I've noticed CIOs are talking about how they're gonna change the physical workplace. And I'm like, in 35 years, I've never heard CIOs get into that. And I'll say, well, where's your real estate people? And sometimes they don't even know their names. And then, you know, you'll talk to HR people and they're bringing people back. And it's like, well, how are you gonna manage bringing them back from like social distancing or cleaning? And so sometimes I think it's just asking the questions or just getting some of them together. And I think for transformation uh, teams, sometimes it's saying, you know, we've got an idea and just educating them on it because, you know, real estate, we've often been the back office of the back office. If you're not thinking about us, we've been doing a pretty good job. Some of our real estate people need to come up into the front office and help with some of these initiatives, especially given the impact to technology, uh, reduction of footprint or changes to the workplace, but then as the, the talent piece I mentioned. So so I would tell folks on the call, sometimes it's just an educational opportunity. There's there's probably a lot of these things already going on in pockets in your company. And a year from now, you're going to find out, wow, had we coordinated a little bit better, we would have had a different, better outcome. And I think that's that's what's so key right now to start some of those conversations. Excellent. Eugene Kuhl is saying, great presentation. I never thought of real estate in the way that you have provided here to us. So <clears throat> he's thank you for that. <clears throat> um, another comment that has surfaced throughout your talk here is that a lot of people kind of take real estate for granted. And in a certain extent, it's like it's fixed and it's there. You just kind of you know, deal with it, right? You have these long lease terms, you know, we lease this building for the next 10 years. We forgot how long the lease is. Most people in the organization don't know how long the lease of their building is for, uh, just as an example. And, um, and, uh, and I think that there's, uh, personally, I have been involved in real estate optimization improvement projects where we were, you know, astonished to see that some of our buildings had like a 20% occupancy just because we're not paying attention. There are buildings everywhere in the world and all of a sudden you have all these buildings that you know you didn't pay attention to and the, the business strategies have shifted and your allocations of professionals in different buildings have dramatically shifted. So a lot of that has to do with these long lease terms. Do you see a shift in that in the, in the industry one way or the other uh, in terms of the length of the lease terms that happens related to commercial buildings? You know, there's there's demand for um, more flexibility. You you see that with the rise of the co-working environments, um, but there's also you know leases or economic transactions. So we could have a whole session on the the economics of the building and, and what you get for that ten year lease. Um, I, I would tell people stop focusing on the ten year lease. I mean, it's important. Focus on you. You don't go into the office for ten years. You go in for 30 minutes today for a meeting, and then you may fly to a client in, in our old world and hopefully in our future new world. You may uh, be in a conference room on a video call collaborating with a client in another part of the world. So that's why I say people are important. It's how the people use it. And when we start understanding that, that's gonna drive the types of properties, the lease terms, the amenities, 
the technology that we put into that space, that's what's going to drive the better value out of it. Very well. And you talked about a lot about reconfiguring the space that you have, right, to optimize that space. Um, does JL offer those types of services as well, other than, of course, the, the, the buildings? Uh, do you offer those services to clients on the reconfiguration and the, or, or that's a third party that comes in and does that for you? It can be both. Some companies will have uh, providers that they work with and we'll, we can come in and manage or if we're putting people into a building, they may bring their own. We have that capability. We also have a, uh, uh, a subsidiary called Big Red Rooster, um, slightly different name, but they actually focus on the retail environment. How can you make your space reflect your brand? Um, and we've learned a lot of lessons from them, even in our office environments. And, and I make fun of, of cube farms a lot, partly because I never want to have to go back into one. But, you know, your, your office environment can reflect your brand. Your manufacturing location reflects brand. If you're a hospital or healthcare, that reflects what you want to be to the world. And so there's big opportunities, uh, not just in, in the, the efficiency play and experience play for our people, but in the face that we put out to the public. Excellent. Uh, questions continue to come in. Let me look here. We have Arzu Sabeya who is making a comment saying that, um, let me get her on screen here. Um, her comment is that, um, thank you for sparking a different and, and a deeper mindset about real estate. We appreciate that. Very rich content. Uh, Gabriela Pereira from New Jersey is asking, many companies are reducing their physical footprint dramatically with a large percent of their employees not going back to the office. Um, what's going to happen with those empty spaces and uh, what impact will have it in other businesses in the area, you know, and, and really kind of local economies? How, how do you see that, that transition taking place? Yeah, Gabriela, it's a great question and, and one that we get a lot. And I'll say, uh, you know, the death of the office building has been predicted for you know the whole time I've been in the industry it changes it's not dying it, it changes and I'll actually use Gabriel's in New Jersey if you remember back to shortly after 9-11 everybody was predicting that Manhattan was going to dry up all those buildings were going to go away and instead pre-COVID we were seeing a building boom I mean Hudson Yards is being built a lot of companies were excited about that so we will see some companies and they're going to make headlines about reductions or, you know, there was a headline the other day about a, a retailer uh, going out of business uh, in the bricks and mortar and going completely online. But even that one, they've got to have fulfillment centers. It's going to change. Even with the office, if you look at the world around you in the news headlines, people are wanting to go back out into the environment. They're wanting to go shop. They're wanting to go to movies. They're wanting to go out and eat. We're seeing that in the headlines every day. People are going to want to get back and collaborate or be around coworkers when they need to and when they choose to. And I think that's what's going to drive this future version of office. And we are going to need those spaces. They'll be different, but we're still going to need them. Excellent points. Um, I have Brooke Ree here who has a, a comment. Uh, she said that we're finding pockets of resistance to the hybrid model, mostly due to wanting to quote, return to normalcy. Um, so however, normal is changing and we need to help both leaders and associates become comfortable with the technology that will facilitate our future collaboration. So do you have thoughts on the training uh, strategies to reskill or upskill at all levels so that we can take, um, so that we can take advantage of this collaboration opportunities? You know, it's, it's, um, I had a, stat and I didn't use it and I'm going to use it now. Gartner did a survey and around hybrid office return to work, they found that one of the biggest problems was leadership attitude. Uh, about 74% of companies they surveyed, their, their HR teams said that the problem they were having was leadership attitudes around what needed to be done. Uh, so I think that the, the question there is very aptly put. Um, I think one thing is, and especially, you know, transformation uh, teams do this a lot, it's, it's coming back with facts and showing things. There was one CIO I was talking to the other day, who's a uh, uh, CIO rather, their CEO was a, everybody must be in the office. If I can't see them, they're not working. And they showed him statistics that showed that productivity actually went up when their people went home, that the employee satisfaction actually went up because people were able to balance work and life much better. You know, it, it's life, you know, 
Um, and they said that the the literally the look on his face on the video call, it, it undid 35 years of his leadership thinking. But now suddenly he was open to how do I keep these productivity metrics up, but also enable the office when people need to be here or whatnot. And so I think that's an example. I think it's going back with, with some facts and figures. But like I said earlier, it's going to be different for every company. So it's having that conversation. I put my email address in there, eddie at jll.com. I'm happy to just, you know, challenge me, reach out. You know, I'm happy to share. But everybody's situation is going to be a little bit differently, and it's going to be based on your culture, your location, and what your company wants to be and the talent it wants to attract. Thank you, Eddie. We are, we are out of time here, but I want to confirm, emphasize with the audience, reach out to Eddie, post on our LinkedIn uh, post that we have on additional questions you have. There are other questions that have come up here that we haven't had the time to, to address, but such a rich presentation, such a eye-opening presentation to so many of us who, uh, who are not aware of, uh, of the the rich opportunities that exist on the real estate. And uh, thanks for opening our minds to these opportunities, a little bit of innovation techniques on search and reapply. How can we reapply these new concepts and perspectives into our organizations? And uh, we're very thankful for you to present, uh, to present this material for, for us today and, and for your energy and passion behind it. After so many years, you know, leading this type of initiatives, you still have a tremendous passion about the topic and that's and that's inspirational to, to all of us. Thank you, Jose. And if, if the uh, audience tells you topics they would like to see explored deeper, I'm happy to bring some JLL experts or industry experts back and do another session with you in the future based on what uh, people would like to see or hear more about. That's terrific. We will probably set something like that up because we're, we're getting a lot of great positive feedback on, on the topic and on your presentation. So thank you very much for that. Thank you for the opportunity. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was Edward Wagoner, uh, CIO for JLL. Tremendous view, tremendous perspective on the real estate and uh, the, the, the size of real estate, the economic impact of real estate and how it affects our organizations. Have you thought about doing improvements and innovation projects in the real estate and uh, of your organization? How does that change with, um, with this hybrid model that Edward has shared with us? Um, very, very interesting perspectives. And this is what digital transformation workplace is all about. We really work hard to bring you perspectives from different industries because this cross-pollination of knowledge is very likely where we get insights that can be reapplied into our organizations to create significant value. So this is an innovation technique and we're using in real time here with this sessions. And our next session, as you would imagine, is going to bring yet another great industry for us to discuss uh, uh, digital transformation on. Our next speaker will be Mark Marco Chimura, who is the Director of Quality and Transformation for Morningstar. So I'm very much looking forward to that. Mark Marco has led one of the best in class RPA applications, robotics process automation applications in the financial sector. We're going to be looking on how they're using their RPA program and uh, to and how it impacts SOX controls in the financial industry. So incredible presentation. I'll see you at the top of the hour. Very much look forward to to engaging with you again and you are always all awesome questions uh, with Marco. So see you back at the top of the hour.